And coming up on Cron 4 News, uh, let's check in with Henry. Did you give me this for a reason, I, I did, Isabel, because that actually may toys. look like a child's toy. <laughs> well, okay, it is a child's toy, Isabel, but try this. It's also a yeah. stress reliever. Oh. So uh, we have with us the premier toyologist, Dr. Toy, is going to be joining us with a vast collection of toys, local toys, great toys for you and for your family. That's coming up on Cron 4 News Weekend. Steve Van Auerbach is perhaps best known as Dr. Toy. Puppets are a great way to introduce books to children and mm -hmm. to read to them. So it's very important to have puppets. But her interest extends beyond just toys. Recently, she's been focusing her efforts on the study, celebration, and protection of the butterfly. This is by no means a new passion. She's been fascinated by butterflies for some time. It started with a beaded bag. My grandmother gave this to me when I was 16, and there was something about the butterfly that started to come together. And then when I was out in nature, I would see butterflies. So it came together, the art and the science of butterflies. One such encounter with a painted lady butterfly that landed on her is described in her book. My mind's antenna caught the message transmitted by painted ladies. I was astonished that it would be possible to understand a butterfly. It seemed unreal, yet the clarity of the day, the warmth and perfection of the time, the time on the rock, and the magic of the river slowly revealed its own mysteries. I was spellbound. I was able to understand everything she communicated. I felt a surge of compassion for the fragile creature. Her delicate wings of orange, black, and white gleamed in the sun. My own vulnerability softly mingled with her shyness. I felt more sensitively aware of how difficult it must be for her to attempt to communicate. Her eyes remained hidden to me. I was absorbed by the vibration of the butterfly. The painted lady said, I know some humans care about nature. I ask for your help. Please protect my brothers and sisters from harm. There is a growing terror among us in an increasingly hostile world. The places we live are being demolished by humans, by careless construction. We're being poisoned by toxic pesticides that destroy our breeding grounds, our eggs, and our food. We can't find the plants and the flowers we need to survive, she softly explained. Only a few special places exist where we lay our eggs. Without these sacred places, our lives as caterpillars and butterflies are doomed. The lives of butterflies are in balance with water, plants, and the air we all breathe. She said, everything on Earth depends on the survival of each species. Each one is dependent on another. The health and the future of the planet rests and is balanced precariously on the wings of the butterfly. And as she said butterfly, she quickly added, please help us and flew away. In recent years, Stevan's lifelong love of butterflies has manifested itself in two important projects. In 2015, she published a book on butterflies. In 2016, she decided to submit her 40-year-old collection of over 1,000 butterfly artifacts to the Guinness Book of World Records. Along the way, she's brought together many fellow butterfly enthusiasts, exploring and documenting the ways in which butterflies affect our neighborhoods and our culture. The butterfly is an inspiration to artists and craftspeople around the world because of its form and shape and surprise factor. She's brought together musicians, artists, and scientists. You are what you eat, and the monarch eats milkweed. Milkweed tastes yucky, but the monarch is cool. The bird eats the monarch and spits and says fooey and won't eat another, he's nobody's fool. Education of birds is a boon to the monarch, or at least it's a boon to the monarch gene pool. The Viceroy wears orange and black like the monarch. 
He's yummy and doesn't cause gastric distress. <laughs> but the birds never read him, and here is the message. I bid you take heed if you're out to impress. The monarch shows one can succeed with bad taste. But the viceroy's betting on dress for success. She's also worked with local companies looking to create and restore butterfly habitats. One of the outstanding craft has been putting together kits and they have a wonderful array of and ways to create your own butterfly gardens. Stevan has also visited a number of butterfly habitats throughout the Bay Area in an effort to understand how these habitats are changing and what that means for the butterfly. Butterflies lay eggs. It's the beginning of their cycle and they like to lay their eggs where the, when the eggs hatch out they are little tiny caterpillars and they need to eat. They eat the color green and the pipe vine swallowtail only eats the pipe vine. The pipe vine. So if the mom, have, if you don't have pipeline, you can't go to the butterfly. It's the whole basis. Right. I almost think of this animal is like the plant in an animal form. It's right. completely grown from the one plant, and it's full of um, poison. This plant, so their exclusive relationship might be based on this toxicity that's provided through the plant which the plant, I assume, created for itself, but the butterfly is borrowing this. Um, he's not reinventing the wheel, he's borrowing the defense and of the plant. So like we talked about with the pipe vine, using the chemical protection, this guy's using the physical protection. Oh. And he wraps a stinging nettle leaf around himself as a caterpillar and as a chrysalis. Mm. And they will happily eat thistle as well. <laughs> That's a lot of who we serve is the, the school well, age child, especially the six and seven. And then I'm hoping one day to get a small lab with some microscopes and get kids back in the preteen. Yes. And get them back into bugs again. Butterflies That's are the gateway bug. So when you started the garden, what did you plant? When we started it, that was 2003, and I have a wonderful friend, Madia Meyer, who um, has curated a garden in Mill Valley, and so we had her grow plants and plant them here for us. And so she either grew them from uh, seeds she collected locally, or she bought them from mostly natives which grows from local sources. You have monarchs here too? Oh yeah, we just saw one. You have, where do you plant the milkweed? Well, I did, I would not have planted milkweed myself, but when we bought this place, I was given a plant of local Asclepius Sicularis by a wonderful plants woman, and so I felt I should plant it. So <laughs> uh, nature, you've helped nature. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Barry fabulous. says we have a nature channel in our yard. Organisms vary geographically in their ecology, in their seasonality, in their genetics, in their biochemistry. And so the same taxonomic species may have quite different ecological roles in different areas. And this species is an excellent example. Its hosts are in the carrot family, APAC. Like most butterflies, it recognizes its hosts by their distinctive secondary chemistry, so-called because the substances at issue are not part of basic or primary metabolism. They are synthesized by the plant as defenses against herbivores and pathogens. And if we don't take care of them, this is what's going to happen. You see the, the, the aspect of survival, which leads me to another song that is going to be performed by Rick Auerbach, who's a distant cousin. And he's written a song about the survival of butterflies, which I thought this would be the perfect time for you to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Messengers of lightness, those changers without any tears, that floating kiss of color, those weightless wings of the butterflies, they've begun to disappear. And of course, she's continued to grow the collection. Journey alone on this spirit through these heavens. Will there really be no one left to share this sweet air? And won't we wither away without the hood of the eye? Without the heartbeat of a bed I hope that my collection and my book, My Butterfly Collection, will help people to become more aware of the importance of the butterfly in the arts and in science. First of all, I want to thank each of you for taking the time out today to be with us today and tomorrow to do this, because you are taking part in history. My history and the Guinness World Records history. Hi, my name is Courtney Allen. Um, I'm currently a museum studies student at John F. Kennedy University getting my master's. I've worked at multiple institutions as the collection manager, um, managing the collection and uh, identifying objects throughout their collection. And I will be helping to identify or to verify, verify the collection today. Thanks. Good morning, I'm Jasmine and I'm here at Steve Ann Orbach's Butterfly Collection. I'm very excited to be here. Looking forward to working with the whole team. Have a great day. <laughs> Mission Blue, Mission Blue, where are you going to? Do you have a place to stay? Little blue echo, little blue echo of the bay. Mission blue, mission blue, your mission days are through. Now the mountain's your place to be. Little blue echo, little blue echo of the sea. The ants are your protectors in your caterpillar days. But you need some humans on your side. So we need to change our ways. Mission Blue, Mission Blue, there's not much room for you to give Lupin wings to fly. Little blue echo, little blue echo of the sky. Cheer it. Okay. So the the ants are your protectors and your caterpillar days. Now you need some humans on your side, so we need to change our ways. Mission Blue, Mission Blue, there's not much room for you to give Lupin wings to fly. Little Blue Echo, Little Blue Echo of the 
So we submitted everything to Guinness about six months ago. But there was a slight discrepancy of the count. We couldn't quite figure out why, but we asked if we could just submit them based on the photographs. But we were requested to create a itemized list, and that has taken a lot of time. So we have finished the itemized list, submitted it, and we're waiting to hear back from Guinness about the uh, results. So this package came in. Wow. I opened it up so it make it easier for you. What is it? it? came in from England. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. The Guinness World Records Certificate, the largest collection of butterfly-related objects is six, 1,649 items and was achieved by Stevan Auerbach, USA, in Berkeley, California, USA, on the 2nd of September, 2017. Officially we are amazing. officially amazing <laughs> with a seal on it. This is so fantastic after all this work. A lot has happened frame. since we did the count. A lot has happened. I want to thank everyone who was involved in making this video, from Jonathan Rooklis to all of the helpers and participants and assistants, everyone who gave us support. Um, it's, it's very thrilling that we were able to actually do it and work together to make it happen. And I want to celebrate by drinking this Guinness and toast you for participating and caring about butterflies. Very happy that we were able to put together the book, we were able to put together the collection, and we were able to put together the video, and now we have to put together a concerted effort to save butterflies. Because if we don't, they're all going to disappear. And the health of the planet rests on the wings of the butterfly. Monarch Butterfly Dreams Faded time extends back Gently unfolds ancient shadows Unspoken memories of millions of monarchs Shimmering wings Soft, slippery slivers of light Shaped illusions of past moments. Travel quietly on your endless journey over mountains and valleys. Fragile reflections of gentle love. Shared time beyond butterfly kiss days. Warm wings fluttering in the clouds moving, changing, searching, soft, quiet immersion, ripple tenderly over water's edge, over vanishing fields of milkweed, to trees high in the Mexican mountains, struggle for survival, who hears your cries or sees your orange wings? We do, we do, we do.
Tenderly.